days. All right, it was 12.01, so we will go ahead and get started. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us at the Be More Bus virtual public meeting. Uh, please note that this meeting is being recorded and we'll post the recording online in the next couple days after the meeting. Uh, my name is Brittany Rolfe and I'm the MTA project manager for the Be More Bus study. Also here are Albert Engel, the MTA planning manager, Latoya F, our public involvement specialist for Be More Bus, Sandy Brennan, our technical lead, and Nick Adamo, our engagement and technical support specialist. All right, so let's get started. We'll begin today with an overview of the Be More Bus study, and then we'll shift to the bulk of our meeting, which is to focus on the recommended service improvements and scenarios, which are out now for public input. Then we'll touch on next steps and end with time to answer any questions you might have. Uh, but before all this, we're gonna do a quick run through of Zoom and how to participate. So your video and audio are disabled by default, but you'll be able to unmute and talk after the presentation. During the presentation, if you have a question, we ask that you type into the built-in question and answer feature. We'll answer all type questions at the end of the presentation. After the presentation, if you prefer to verbalize your question, please use the raise hand feature and the project team will unmute you when it's your turn. If you are dialed in on the phone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. So the project team will answer as many questions as we can during our time together this afternoon. But if you have specific comments that you'd like to share as part of the official public comment period, we ask that you please do so online via our official feedback form, which is available on the Be More Bus webpage. Um, and we'll go over all this again at the end um, so you can have that information uh, before we depart. All right, last little bit. So captions are available on this meeting and they can be enabled by clicking the show captions button on your toolbar. Again, please note that this meeting is being recorded. And with that, let's get into it. So Be More Bus, what is Be More Bus? Uh, the plan is a visionary transit plan for the Baltimore region for the next decade. It focuses primarily on the Baltimore metropolitan area where MTA provides core bus service today. So once complete, the final Be More Bus Plan will identify bus service improvements that could be possible with additional resources. Generally speaking, the plan is a tool to help plan for an aspirational future. We launched the project, we launched the project in the spring with a survey asking people what their priorities for bus service were. Now we're back with recommendations and scenarios based on that input. During this comment period, we're seeking feedback on the recommendations and scenarios then we'll incorporate everything together and release the final plan in early 2025. This past spring, we collected over 700 responses to the survey in which people told us what types of bus service improvements were most important to them. The ranked results are shown here. We heard loud and clear that improving the frequency of our bus service is the highest priority for many of our riders, particularly during the midday, late at night and over the weekend. Next slide, please. So using this feedback, along with data analysis and equity considerations, we develop different service improvements and network scenarios. So the different types of service improvements and network service improvements uh, listed here could be possible with the construction of a new MTA operations and maintenance division facility, as well as other additional agency resources. So you can see we're proposing improvements like increased frequency on weekdays, weekends and overnight, new limited stop service, new and extended routes, on-demand transit service or microtransit, and regional bus service. So we sorted most of these improvements into two scenarios. These scenarios represent two different visions for what additional bus service could look like in the Baltimore region. Scenario one would focus all additional resources on enhancing the frequency of existing routes. Scenario two would focus additional resources on both frequency improvements and on new services and route changes. The other improvements, on-demand microtransit and regional bus service, were identified as services that could be implemented without construction of a new bus division facility. Microtransit and regional bus service improvements could fit into either scenario. So we refer to these types as these types of improvements as contracted services, 
between their types of transit services that could receive funding from MTA, but be fully or partially uh, operated by contractors. Since a contractor is typically responsible for vehicle procurement, storage, and maintenance, the contracted improvements wouldn't be dependent on construction of a new division facility, which would be a substantial project for MTA. So with additional funding, MTA could implement contracted services sooner than the recommendations identified in the two scenarios. All right, so here's just a summary of what we just saw on the last slide, um, looking at the two scenarios and their recommendations. You can see that both scenarios have some overlap in frequency improvements. Uh, note that both scenarios would require the same total amount of fleet resources that would be possible with a new bus division facility, and that's around 200 buses. So now I'll dig a little bit into the scenarios. I'll describe the improvement components and show on a map the corridors where people would have close access to very frequent or 10 minute service and to frequent or 15 minute service. Scenario one, the enhanced frequency scenario would focus all additional fleet resources from a new division on increasing the frequency of CityLink and local link routes system-wide. So just a reminder here, CityLink routes are the color-coded routes like CityLink Green or CityLink Blue that run along major corridors. Local link routes are two digits like the 21 or the 22 that operate on neighborhood streets. So under scenario one, on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., you'd be able to catch any local link bus within 30 minutes and any city link bus within 10 minutes. Overnight, local link and city link would run every 30 minutes. On the weekends, local link would run every 30 minutes from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. and city link would run every 15 minutes from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. To help visualize what this means, on the map, you can see the yellow highlighted corridors. They show where there would be quarter mile access to very frequent service on weekdays. The green highlights show corridors where there'd be quarter mile access to frequent service on weekdays. So moving on to scenario two, uh, the expanded service scenario. This scenario would focus some additional fleet resources on improving weekday, overnight, and weekend frequency standards and some additional resources on expanding or filling gaps in the existing service area. Under scenario two, on weekdays from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., you'd be able to catch a bus within 10 to 15 minutes at many places on the system. This would result from frequency improvements to select local link and city link routes, plus the addition of new limited stop quick link routes. The quick link routes would provide express service along major corridors, supporting the existing city link service by reducing travel times for riders going long distances and increasing the number of trips on those routes. The proposed plan would introduce eight new quick link routes extending from downtown to all four corners of the city. Scenario two would also introduce three new local link routes in eastern Baltimore County um, and would split or extend six existing local link, city link, and quick link routes. These improvements would provide access to key destinations, fill current gaps in service, and improve the reliability of existing routes. So here's a, a list. Um, I know the text is kind of tiny, but here's a list of all the new quick link routes proposed, as well as the new local link routes um, and extended existing routes. Um, I know there's a lot of text in here. Like I said, um, if you'd like to read through these thoroughly, please check out the PDF maps on the project website. Again, at the end of the presentation, we'll go over where you can find those. All right, so here's a breakdown that compares how each scenario would distribute the same total amount of new fleet resources from a fifth division facility. As you can see, scenario one would use 100% of additional resources on frequency improvements. Scenario two would use 60% of additional resources and frequency improvements and 40% of new quick link service and new and extended routes. We've also compared and contrasted the scenarios based on different benefits that they provide to the riders in the region. Here, we look at the number of additional people who would have access to very frequent bus service, again, which is every 10 minutes or better. We used an equity framework to identify the populations who could benefit the most from improved service, including people of color, low-income persons, persons with a disability, and households without a car. Okay. 
The number of key destinations with access to very frequent transit would also improve greatly under both scenarios, but again, slightly better in scenario one. We considered in-person jobs, schools, and healthcare facilities to be key destinations. So we did these same calculations um, for people who would have access to frequent service. Again, that's about 15 minutes or better. And you can go to the next slide and here are the destinations that would have access to frequent bus service. Next slide, there we go. All right, so zooming back out a little bit, earlier in the presentation, we talked about improvement options that could be implemented without construction of a new division facility. We've identified 11 micro transit zones and three regional bus routes that could be partially or fully operated by contractors. The 11 possible micro transit zones are shown in color on the map, primarily around the peripheral of the city. If you aren't familiar with micro transit, it's an on demand door to door transit service, similar to Uber or Lyft, which allows riders to request pickup and drop off within a specified zone using a mobile app. Note that the micro transit zone boundaries that you see here are approximate and would be refined if they are advanced in the future. But each micro transit zone would serve between 20 and 90,000 residents, depending on the zone size and location. Microtransit is useful in areas where there's demand for short local trips uh, that are hard to support with fixed route transit. It can also be used to connect riders and areas to transit hubs. Each proposed microtransit zone here also provides feeder service to at least one existing bus route. So in addition to microtransit, we've also identified three regional bus routes that could improve transit connections uh, to Baltimore from Frederick, Annapolis, and Columbia. Unlike commuter bus service, the regional routes are intended to serve uh, more than the traditional nine to five work trips. So these proposed routes, uh, these proposed routes uh, to Annapolis and Columbia would run every 30 minutes on the weekdays in both directions. The Frederick route would run every 60 minutes on weekdays in both directions. And then all three of the proposed routes would run every 60 minutes in both directions on the weekend. With these regional routes, uh, thousands of people would have access from these cities uh, to Baltimore, while Baltimore residents would be able to more easily access jobs in these suburban cities. All right, so we are only able to share a high level summary of these recommended service improvements and scenarios during our time with you today, but we've created PDF maps as well as an interactive uh, online tool to share all these details. You can visit us online at mta.maryland.gov slash be more bus to see the PDF maps that are available for download and to explore the recommended service improvements and scenarios with the online tool. All right, so we encourage you to share your feedback on these recommendations and scenarios. Our comment period began on September 18th, and we've been out across the region to talk with riders, to share these details, and collect feedback. Our online feedback form is open until the end of the day on October 18th. After the public comment period closes, we'll review and consider all comments received to inform the vision for Baltimore Region Bus Service that would be presented in the final Be More Bus Plan. So if you haven't already signed up to receive Be More Bus email updates, make sure you do so so you can be the first to find out when the final Be More Bus plan is released. Visit our website to sign up. All right, so that concludes the information we have to share with you today. Um, and with that, we'll spend the rest of our time together answering your questions. If you are dialed in on the phone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. Um, again, we'll read through the typed Q&A questions first, and then Latoya will call on those who raise their hands to speak. Thanks. Okay, we have a couple of questions that were submitted, so I will start with the typed questions. Uh, the first one is, I believe that MTA direct hire bus drivers are generally union members, but contracted services may not be. For the contracted services, will there be any contract requirements on the job, such as wage requirements? Yeah, that's a great question. 
Um, so in identifying these potential contracted services, um, we've been very clear from the administrator down that nothing is defined in terms of what level of service would be contracted out. So it is possible that that be, you know, fully or partially contracted. And any of those um, obviously very important details would be worked out, you know, in future negotiations. Okay. So the next question is, if a fifth bus division is not fully functional until 2030, is there an ability to implement some of the improvements before? Yeah, so specifically the improvements that we would possibly be able to implement, um, circle back to those contracted services. Again, the contracted, you know, partially or fully contracted services would require um, additional resources specifically additional funding, um, but these could be implemented before the construction of a fifth division. Okay, those were the only two questions that okay. I saw in the chat and I don't see any hands um, that are raised. So if there's any other questions, please feel free to submit them in the Q&A or raise your hand and I can allow you to unmute. Um, there's a couple more coming in. So how does the FY25 draft CTP affect the implementation and timeline of these improvements? Yes, <laughs> it's a very good question. Um, so as you know, as surely many of you have seen, um, there have been cuts to the CTP due to fiscal constraints. Um, regardless of the CTP cuts, none of these improvements that we've identified here have been identified, no funding has been identified for any of them. Um, so in that way, this plan is a tool that we're going to use to sort of advocate for additional resources and show what we can do with, you know, additional resources in the new bus uh, facility division. Did that help? Uh, Albert, am I missing anything there? I think that's uh, absolutely accurate. Great, thank you. Um, which of the scenarios would address the service has service slash hospitality employment in downtown Baltimore, which happens after 10 p.m. for servicing? I'm gonna let Sandy address that question because that's a little, um, gets into some of the specifics. Sandy, would you mind? Um, responding there? Sure. Um, so actually, if Brittany, you don't mind, or Nick, toggling back to scenarios one and two maps. Um, Brittany mentioned this in her presentation, but there is going to be pretty significant improvement in frequency. And you can see here in yellow, this is um, just displaying during the day. But if you check out our online map, um, you'll see overnight and weekend improvements in frequency. Um, so the yellow indicates where you're going to have access to bus service every 10 minutes, and green indicates access to bus service every 15 minutes. Um, so you'll see in both scenarios, there's gonna be a pretty significant improvement. And included in both scenarios, we are looking at improving service for local links and city links um, on overnights and weekends. So both scenarios really would um, have pretty significant improvement. They just improve it in different ways. Um, one through increases in frequency and the other by adding some of these additional overlay routes. So downtown sees a lot of the best improvements. Um, it's already pretty frequent down there, um, but you also see a lot of our crosstown routes or routes that kind of go from neighborhood to neighborhood um, across town, not going downtown. Those ones are also getting pretty significant improvements. So that won't necessarily require you to head all the way into downtown in order to transfer and, and reach your final destination. So it'll really improve the transfers that are happening around the periphery of the system. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I did see a hand that was raised. Um, I also saw you submitted your question, but I am going to uh, allow you to unmute if you would like to ask for a question live. Hi, uh, this is Rich uh, Reese. 
<clears throat> I'm with uh, I'm a volunteer with the Sierra Club. Um, we noted that uh, there's a danger of uh, defunding for uh, new light rail cars, um, and of course uh, this is going to take uh, funds too. Uh, and uh, in particular for the light rail car situation, uh, there's uh, we need to just provide the matching funds. And there's a federal grant, um, and uh, the uh, light rail is uh, has been very unreliable because of the aging cars. Uh, <clears throat> how can we advocate for adequate funding for transit, as you've outlined, and also for light rail? Great, Albert. Um, I'll start with you. Hey, Rich. Uh, that's a great question, um, and. Uh, this plan is intended to be a tool just for that, uh, to show what additional resources could do um, so that we can demonstrate uh, the, the benefits that additional resources could provide to our bus network. As you mentioned, there's been a lot of discussion uh, um, about the light rail vehicles. We did get the federal grant uh, to, to replace light rail vehicles. That is, a separate funding conversation from the funding discussions that we're having in this uh, about bus network. Um, but I think the the question about what it, how can we advocate is to take the information that, that we've put together uh, and use it as an example of what could be done with resources and what can be done um, to help make the system better. Um, we're trying to use this information for ourselves, but it also can be a tool uh, for members of the public to 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 talk to their own um, uh, elected officials and others about what they think is important about funding transit. Who are the uh, key players uh, in terms of officials with the MTA uh, whom we could address uh, our concerns and our wishes to? Well, we we are with the MTA, um, and so. Um, really, it's for the purposes of what goes into this plan, it's us. Um, but when it's about what are the funding levels, those decisions are made um, by the governor, the legislature, uh, as part of the CTP and budget process. Um, so, so your elected officials um, are the ones that are uh, the people you should be engaging with. Um, and um, as you mentioned, Sierra, you're part of Sierra Club. Um, and so that you know you are you know you have you should be able to leverage whatever connections that you have with uh, your own elected officials and elected officials that are engaged with the Sierra Club. Um, we are producing the plan to show what's possible, um, but in order to feed it, so to speak, and seed it, um, we need the we need support, um, financial support, uh, and that's um, comes from the governor and the legislature. Does the uh, MTA administrator have a role in uh, allocating those funds? Holly's very supportive of, of this plan, um, but we can only spend the money that we get through the bu budget process. And that money, is, you know, you know, that, that number uh, is determined by the political process, um, not within MTA. Okay. Thanks, Albert. Um, the next question we have here is, what enhanced tools or approaches are you considering to measure rel reliability if increased frequency scenario est estimates are based on current levels of service? Then what is the percentage quote goal of buses on time? Sandy and Albert, I'm also going to toss this over to you for kind of specific reliability questions. So I, through this plan, I don't think we're proposing to change any of the reliability standards or targets and how we monitor those. Um, frequency, as some say, equals freedom. So reliability, um, does tend to go up as we increase frequency. So that does help um, in, a, in a different way 
then that maybe Albert can speak to or Brittany on the current efforts underway to address reliability. Sure. Um, so I, I'll say two things. One is um, the question about measuring reliability. Um, I just shared in the chat, um, if you're able to access that, the a link to our customer experience dashboard, which has our on-time performance and ridership information available for the public. And that will show what our current on-time performance uh, is and trends um, in that area. Um, in, we do have a number of programs and projects that are trying to increase our on-time performance, improving transit reliability. Those are things including enforcement of bus lanes, uh, transit priority treatments, uh, improving our transit signal priority, transitioning that to the cloud. Um, so we have a number of those infrastructural elements that we're trying to incorporate to keep uh, improving that number. Um, and that is separate from the service uh, enhancements that are contemplated in this plan. Yeah, but as both Albert and Sandy said, um, we had you know a discussion about reliability. We understand that's kind of the, the number one concern um, for all existing riders. Um, so you know we discussed obviously and are focusing on frequency improvements here. But you know part of our discussion was understanding that with these frequency improvements, along with all these other um, sort of more infrastructure focus improvements that MTA is doing um, indirectly, that would also help reliability in the future as well. Thank you. This uh, next question, which I think you may have answered in part, um, is also a, talks about reliability, but it is one of the biggest challenges I face as a bus rider is buses not coming on time or when they are supposed to, rather than following the schedule. It requires intently watching the GPS trackers in the app, which are not often accurate either. Which plan addresses the reliability of the service and how? And I think you addressed some of the first portion of that. Yeah. I can speak also to the um, reliability of the real-time information. That is something that we're constantly trying to improve. Um, we recently upgraded on the bus side, uh, the onboard antennas to provide location information every one to two seconds as opposed to every 12 to 15 seconds. That doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually uh, has the potential to greatly improve the predicted arrival times and location information. Um, and so we're hopeful that uh, over time, the on time, the, the accuracy of the real time and predicted information will go up as, as the system adapts to those new antennas. Um, on the rail side, um, for Metro specifically, we've just been implementing the new communication-based control system um, for the um, real-time information and signaling. Uh, and so that should help with the real-time location information um, for Metro. Um, so I, I think those are, you know, the question is right, that you know, the real-time location in the app um, I personally use transit app. That's going to get you uh, a better shot at when the bus is going to be there than necessarily what's in the printed schedule. Um, but we do try to keep to the printed schedule and the printed schedule is what our on-time performance um, statistics are, are based on. Yep. As we you know mentioned earlier, both scenarios would have substantial frequency improvements. So you know, like we said, with those frequency improvements, um, along with these other you know um, tracking uh, tracking improvements and infrastructure improvements, uh, the goal again is to sort of indirectly uh, increase reliability. Um, I say indirectly because that's a, a sort of a secondary goal of be more bus specifically, but it is um, you know something we are thinking about. Thank you. Um, how will the service to and from Annapolis be impacted in either scenario? Sandy, if you wanna take that one. Sure, so it's gonna be um, improved um, in both scenarios. So actually I think the 70 is proposed to have um, 30 minute service all day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night. 
Um, so the trunk of the route where it overlaps with the 69 up in like Glen Burnie area, that's going to essentially have 15 minute service all day. And then between Glen Burnie and Annapolis, you would be seeing, you know, service every 30 minutes. Um, on the weekends, we'd propose to both on Saturday and Sunday also increase uh, the 70 to 30 minute service as well. Um, and then in addition to that, independent of the scenarios, we're also proposing a regional route to um, from downtown Baltimore to Annapolis. And that service would have all day service um, every 60 minutes at least on weekdays and on weekends. Um, that would be a little bit uh, faster uh, routing, um, faster trip, because it wouldn't make all the local stops like the 70 does. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. Um, the other question that we have here is, um, how about rail service? Are we looking at any improvements to rail service with this um, project? Yep, so as Albert said before, um, rail service is a separate consideration um, from Be More Bus. The study focuses specifically on bus improvements. Um, mm -hmm. Albert, do you want to? Uh, I mean, we have, um, as was mentioned, the light rail um, rail car replacement. Um, we're also replacing the entire fleet of metro um, rail cars. Uh, those are going to start entering service next summer, summer of 2025. Um, and those should help with the reliability um, and improve the customer experience. Uh, but yeah, this, this is a bus plan. Um, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on the um, our mode that serves the most customers by far, which is our core bus network. Thank you. Um, I do see a question here that was answered um, via chat, but I wanna make sure that everyone has a chance to hear the answer. So it says improved frequency seems to happen during the day um, hours until 10 p.m. What service will be available for the worker with a shift that ends after 11 p.m. to 3 a.m.? So both scenarios that we're proposing um, would um, improve overnight service uh, to 30 minutes. Um, so it would it would improve under either scenario. Um, Sandy, are there any additional details we can share on that. Yeah. So just to clarify, whenever we say overnight service, we're talking about um, 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. That's what we consider overnight. So that's looking at, again, like Brittany said, 30 minute service, at least on all routes at a minimum, if not better, overnight. Thank you. Um, there's one comment that I just want to read aloud. Uh, and it's, thank you, that would bring the politicians into Annapolis with public transit. And that was after the question about um, connecting to Annapolis. And the next question is, what are you doing to increase bus frequencies? What bus upgrades are you doing along the North-South corridor along Charles Street? I think these are maybe two separate questions in here um, in general to improve bus frequency. So we can, um, we want to click back to the scenario distribution pie charts um, and share that slide again. So again, so both, uh, both scenarios would improve frequency. Scenario one uh, would improve, would focus all additional like new fleet resources uh, from a new division. Um, on enhancing frequency, so weekday, weekend, and overnight, um, and then about 40% of new fleet resources uh, would be used in scenario two for increasing, uh, you know, weekday and weekend and overnight. Um, plus, in, you know, in scenario two, there's, there would be new quick link service, was, which would also help with kind of frequency along the corridors. Um, North-south improvements, Albert, I'm going to... Put that over to you as well. I, I interpret this question, and if, if whoever wants submitted it wants to clarify if I'm if I'm wrong, I interpret this to mean um, 
looking at the um you know the specific routes that run along charles street so if we want to go just look at the um uh the scenarios um i think we were proposing to increase the frequency on all of those and there was also a quick link um along which which sandy can the you help me out on where the quick corridor were? is that is that what the quick link would be in the north south corridor Yes. Um, okay. So specifically, uh, you know, north south corridor. So anywhere you know along Charles, and then all the way up to Towson along York, uh, we have really pretty solid frequency, um, independent of the reliability discussion. Uh, solid frequency um, during the day and weekdays, but really where you're going to see the biggest improvements along Charles and north of North Avenue is going to be again on the weekend and overnight hours. You're going to see, you know, basically what's almost 10 minute service along those corridors. Thank you. Um, are there plans to expand the commuter bus routes, including all day service, so I can travel to other cities in Maryland without a car? So the regional routes that we have proposed here, uh, we're considering to be separate um, from what the existing commuter bus service is. There are no proposed changes to commuter bus, um, you know, as we're looking at today. Um, they just had some uh, changes this last summer um, that are available. You can view those on the website. So regional bus routes that we're proposing, um, and like I said, we're looking at um, three here, but also maybe considering additional ones in the final plan. Um, these would connect you, um, you know, very frequently throughout the day um, and on weekends to, to, these, uh, to these cities. Thank you. Uh, Brittany, that was the last question that we had uh, entered into the Q&A, and there are currently no hands raised. All right, well, maybe we can give it another second or so. All right. So, Nick, if you just want to put up the last slide here. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Um, I think we have some really great uh, questions and answers, and hopefully um, this helped clarify some, some info about Be More Bus for you. Um, shown here is the project website. We encourage you to visit it, um, submit your feedback via the online comment form, um, access those downloadable PDF maps, and then check out the online tool where you can really uh, get into the details of the uh, what's improved. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, what's proposed for the recommendations and the scenarios holistically. Feel free to also email us any questions at bemorebus at mta.maryland.gov. Uh, and please also feel free to give us a call. Uh, we have a voicemail box uh, directly. That's 410-767-9099. And we'd be happy to turn in, return any message uh, that you leave us. All right. So again, thanks everybody. We appreciate your attendance.